A little rain is nice. A lot of rain like today felt like we lived in Oregon. Oregon, that's where it, it? it came from, <laughs> you know? And, and you can see on the maps kind of a wall coming across mm -hmm. in some areas that Scott showed us. And you know, when I used to see those over in Wisconsin, Scott, I, I thought straight line winds. Yes, straight line wind damage, exactly. Yeah. Those downburst winds that shoot out. And we get them here in the summertime, uh, but boy, they can get it bad there. It's, it's a little more serious uh, in the Midwest when that occurs in Tornado Alley. Right now, though, we're just dealing with kind of that steadier rain that we had, at least earlier today, then some showers popping in, more thunderstorms coming in later on. So you can see part of this map, this is called the front type versus uh, the cold air movement. If the cold air is retreating, it is a warm front. So the leading edge of warmer air is moving on in. If a cold front is advancing, and then you basically, if the cold air is advancing, you have a cold front. And what you're talking about basically is just air masses moving back and forth and a front being the dividing line between that. So why do these fronts produce precipitation? Here's what's happening. There's your cold air behind the cold front. There's the warm air. You've got a dividing line between the two, and the air is basically converging. That's the key. When it converges, it has nowhere else to go but up. And so rising air, rising air currents will cool, condense, form clouds, and precipitation. So wherever there's rising air, we're going to get our rain. So around fronts, you have rising air because of the converging, uh, the converging air masses causing that rising air, and that causes precipitation. Fronts will stall if the wind on both sides of the front kind of comes together. Basically, that front moves less than 15 miles an hour. It's considered, considered a stationary front, but you can still get precipitation along that front, and it can last for a little while, too, because of the fact that it's been sitting there for a while. And everything else is being governed by what's happening in the upper atmosphere. When the jet stream goes by and diverges, that, too, causes the air to rise. Hence, more precipitation, and there's a low pressure right there on the ground underneath that. So we're looking for the rising air to get the precipitation. If you've got any questions or some photographs, email me at weather at fox9now.com. So what gives us precipitation? Precipitation, rising air or sinking air? Rising air. Rising, rising air. air. Very good. You guys passed the test. <laughs> oh, that's good. Monday we passed. Great. I hope you get something for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Scott.